Hey everybody, welcome back to 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that is apparently a thing now, because I've got 5 minutes for some news. So let's start with one of my absolute favorite gaming stories from the last few days. PlayStation announced that Call of Duty is having a crossover event with Attack on Titan. And of course it was roasted by the internet, just gobbled up like a big giant man would eat several people behind a wall. Look, I've never seen Attack on Titan. I don't know anything about Attack on Titan at all. Uh, I know that a lot of my friends love it, and I'm sure that you love it, but uh, one of the things I do know is that this, whatever the hell this is, does not look like anything I would have thought Attack on Titan is. This man right here is like a 40-year-old father of three salary men in a cosplay who's just like, I'm here to help. I don't, I don't know what they were going for here, but uh, I do understand the roast because that is, that's ridiculous. What's even more crazy is to think about this versus other integrations in games like Fortnite, where it's clear there was some attempt at kind of an aesthetic because all Fortnite characters roughly look the same. But sometimes when you look at Fortnite comps, you can notice that in fact, they are not. Different genres have different looks, and sometimes they don't gel together, but that's fine. Because, you know, people want to have weird, wacky comps. I, I kind of understand where Call of Duty is coming from this. They want to bring in Attack on Titan, yet still have it feel like it's a part of their world. It's just very difficult to port anime into anything that looks real. Just ask Netflix. And at the end of the day, if we ignore all the roasts, or the fact that it really does look ridiculous, I have a lot of questions. Like... Why did this happen? Who brought this together? I mean, all right, money is clearly why it happened, but what was the thought process behind it? What were they thinking? I would love to know that. Was it two guys who are friends from different companies and they just got drunk together one night and were like, I have an idea. I, I don't know, but I would love to know the behind the scenes because frankly, I bet it is just a ton of fun to read about. Also in the news, that's right, there are two things today. Phil Spencer was over on the New York Times podcast and was talking about cross-platform stuff and all sorts of things Xbox related. And one of the topics that got brought up was bans. And just for clarity, here's a quote of what he said. Uh, I'd love to know where you fall on this because it is a little vague. Uh, this is a hard one for the industry, Spencer allowed. But when somebody gets banned in one of our networks, is there a way for us to ban them across other networks? Or at least as a player. For me to be able to bring my banned user list because I always want to block people from my play. Again, uh, the beginning of that seems to infer a company or like a platform ban. But the end is him saying, well, maybe the solution is like a personal ban. Um, honestly, I think that's... Uh, up for a lot of debate. Do I think any of it's ever gonna happen? No. I don't think the idea of getting all these companies on the same page is never gonna happen. But the concept, the idea, the debate of it is certainly interesting. Spencer went on to say that basically Xbox is not a social media platform. It is not designed for you to go on there and like share your crazy opinions about whatever. It is basically a platform for playing games and his objective is to make it a fun place to do that not a place to like hang out with like-minded individuals and talk about whatever. Of course, people started talking. You can bet some people saw it as a free speech issue. There are always opinions on that. Uh, but at least from my point of view, I, I don't want to log in to play a game and just be bombarded with like people being an asshole. You know what I mean? I would like to play a game the way I would like to play the game. That's my gaming experience. And you should be allowed to have the tools necessary to make it the experience you want. You paid for it after all. And even though we're still existing in this weird world of, do we really own the thing we paid for? Which is a whole other topic. You still paid for the experience. And as an experience, you should be able to set the terms of what you want that to be. And so being able to ban people, block people, whatever, I think is uh, is something that, you know, is, is good. And if they do ever get to the point in some fantasy world where all the different platforms line up together and they're like, we're on the same page, then I think you as a person should be allowed to block ban whoever. Company-wise, that's a different story. That's a touchier subject. But we have to remember... Free speech is certainly the right for you to say whatever you want. 
However, it does not alleviate you from the consequences of saying something dumb. Cross-platform and the future of it is, is very interesting because as more devs are looking to do cross-platform across Nintendo and PlayStation and Xbox and PC, seeing what the big companies do and how they handle that will certainly be, uh, I'm going to say newsworthy as time moves on. So I cannot wait to see what happens. I cannot wait to see your reactions to this and what you think about uh, what Phil was talking about and if it really is even like, you know, that big of a story or if it's just something interesting that he was riffing on. Again, let me know. That's it for the news and I'll see you all later.